Hey, Rose, want to grab a drink? Your happiest hour of the week starts now. Sit back, relax, and enjoy because Because the the drinks drinks are are on us. us. Welcome back to Drinks on Us. I'm Riley. And I'm Rose. We are so happy you joined us for happy hour. If you are watching the YouTube version, which I highly encourage, you can tell we're in a different setup. We are actually downstairs in Ryan and I's home in Louisville, Kentucky, because the McClure's here. The McClure's are here. That's a tongue twister, us <laughs> uh, McMahon and McClure's. Um, but they're here. We're in Louisville this weekend, and we decided to have a really, really special episode. We have two very, very special guests, Ryan and Cade, our husbands. We're bringing them on the pod. We asked you guys some relationship questions and just to kind of like get to know the dynamic of our friendship as the four of us and just how we became, uh, how we got to marriage. But I don't want to spoil the episode, but they're going to come on here in a little bit. Um, they're actually watching from the corner, drinking bourbon, having a good time. <laughs> um, and they went golfing together yesterday. They woke up this morning and got bourbon. They're like having the best weekend ever. Yes. So we're going to recap a little bit of our trip, tell you guys what we're up to this weekend. But if you can see on the video, we have some special things in our cup today. So Rai, what's in your cup? Okay. So this morning, Rose and I went to Quill's Coffee, which if you guys are listeners um, throughout our past episodes, we talked about how much we love Quill's. I got the best coffee. It's a salted maple. So it's like sweet and salty. It is perfection. I'm going to take a sip. Yeah. Take a sip. Um, I have a couple of my favorite lattes there. And Riley and I, like Riley said, if you've been listening, you know that Riley looks forward to Quills. I look forward to Quills every day and I live here. So we're really excited to go. And Salt and Maple is amazing. I'm glad you loved it or are loving it. And I'm drinking what's called a Woodsman Latte. And it's basically a brown sugar cinnamon latte. It's so yummy. I got it with almond milk. And I'm also going to take a sip because we need all the caffeine. So maybe let's start to unpack to our what we've done so far. Okay. So the reason that we, Kate and I are here visiting with Rose and Ryan is because there was an alumni golf outing yesterday for Louisville baseball. Ryan golfed in the outing with Kate. They had the best day ever. Rose and I got some business things done. We spent the day together and we had a little get together last night. Do you want to tell them why? Yes. Okay. So if you do follow us or me on my personal or Riley at this point, The news is out that Ryan and I are moving to Florida. Huge announcement. Huge. It feels amazing. Riley has probably known since Ryan and I knew. So it's been kind of just like weird holding it in, but it just wasn't the right time. Um, But Riley and I will unpack that in later episodes because we have special guests today and we have a busy itinerary to get to. And I feel like there's just so much I need to share on that. Um, So be on the lookout. We'll definitely unpack the move on the pod. But... What were, where were we going with that? Oh, so last night we had our little get together. It was basically a going away party for Rose and Ryan. They aren't leaving their house just yet, but this was like the time that everyone's in town and mm-hmm. it just made sense. So like Rose said, we are going to unpack, unpack the whole move in another episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but today we are going to the Louisville football game. So Yay. right after we wrap um, recording this podcast, we're going to get changed and head over to the stadium. So we have such a busy and fun day planned. Yes. So obviously you guys are listening to this. It's now Wednesday. We are obviously only together through the weekend, but we thought it was, we would be silly to not capitalize on being together and also bringing the men on. So yes, it's currently Saturday and we're going to go to the Louisville game. We're going to go to some fun tailgates. And I feel like we should talk about the black market because it's kind of a running joke now. Okay. Tell okay. them what it is. Okay. So last year, Riley, Riley and Kate usually come to Louisville once a year and it's the best. It's usually around this time of year. And there is this really cute bar across from the Louisville football stadium. And it's fairly new. And I forget, was it Kaylee who told us about them the first time? Okay. So Kaylee Sparger, shout out to Kaylee. Um, Love you girl. Told us about these amazing special drinks that no one goes to. It's kind of like hidden. It's not super marketed. And it's actually, I will post on my social media to confirm that it is called the black market, but it's nugget ice and you can get fresh lemon with vodka or bourbon or tequila. It's so good. It's dead. It's not deadly. It's scary though. It it really hits you out of nowhere because it tastes so yummy. It's so good. And Rose and I love it because it's not like super sugary because it's fresh, Mm -hmm. like lemon juice or orange juice. Like they squeeze it right in front of you. And so last night at the get together, we were like, we can't wait to go to the black market. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? They really are doubting me. And I'm really hoping that my instincts are right. And it is called black market, but we're going to go tailgate and um, like 
this morning, Riley mentioned Ryan and Kate went and they're on cloud nine because they went to this distillery that has specialty bourbon. So they're in a good, they're in a great mood. You'll see them later. They are hyped and ready. Um, so we're just excited and hopefully the Louisville Cardinals win. So actually, if you guys are um, listeners weekly, Riley, the last time Louisville played is when Riley went to the pit game. And so I think Louisville last week had their bye week when we were in Austin. So I'm a little worried, but I think this is a really big game. We're both ranked. I'm kind of nervous. I really, really hope we win. We have to bring the good spirits and just like manifest a win. Yes. So um, we're we're having the best time. I'm already like, we talked about this last weekend with the girls trip, but when the day is like the, the day before you leave, you start to get nervous that... Um, not nervous, but kind of sad because last weekend it was so much easier leaving Riley because I knew I'd see her this weekend. But yeah, we're going to go to the game. It's a 3.30 game. Um, he tries not to bark because he knows he gets in trouble. Sorry, guys. Rin is barking because um, we can kind of segue into this. But Rinny, this isn't your pod, baby. If you can see him, he's just tucked up into this corner. He's so confused why we're filming and what's even going on. So anyways... Um, he's barking because I, we just got a package delivered to our door. And so we are on pins and needles because Riley and I both order boots to my house. Okay, guys, sorry for this chaos. Ren was barking because I've been on pins and needles. Riley and I both ordered different black boots to the house for our outfits for the game. And mine was supposed to be delivered yesterday. Riley's have successfully made it. So claps to Riley, but Mine said order will be delayed. Is it Amazon, Ryan? Okay, I'm on pins and needles, you guys. You guys are getting real raw content here. <gasps> My boots made it! The boots came. I'm sorry the if you're listening. Came. I was probably screaming, but the boots made it. And now I get to put together an outfit. Here comes the delivery man. Oh, Yay! look at him go. Okay, so here are the boots. This is so funny. This is I'm this so is so happy they just got delivered. They just got delivered. So basically they're supposed to be delivered yesterday and we were checking. We were like so excited and Riley's like, "Mine are out for delivery. Have you checked yours?" And I was like, "Mine said be they would be delivered by the end of the day." And then I checked it said your order is delayed. I said, "No, but this morning when we were on our way to coffee, um it said out for delivery by 10 p.m. I said, that's not going to work. But anyways, I'm really happy. Um, so we're going to go to the game and then maybe like just kind of see where the day takes us. Sorry, yes. I got... That was chaos. That was absolute chaos. But <laughs> I am seriously so happy your boots came. Um, I texted Rose on like Tuesday. I'm like, I really want to wear black cowgirl boots to the game, but they're not going to get to my house in time. If I order them, can I ship them to your house? She's like, actually, I just ordered black boots, shipped them to my house. So we are going to be opening our Amazon packages after we wrap and I putting on our outfits. And yeah, so we will link our boots um, because obviously they were in our cart. And yes. should we talk about what else is in our cart? Yes, that's a perfect segue. Okay, so... I was doing my makeup this morning using the very last drop of my e.l.f. Holy Hydration Face oh, Moisturizer. The one you said you use. So I use it before my foundation. And I was always nervous to put on lotion, like face lotion before doing foundation because I can get oily very easily. Mm -hmm. This e.l.f. Holy Hydration is legit. And it apparently is a Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream oh. Duo. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed. I literally got it at Target. It's so cheap. And I used literally the last drop of this big jar today. So guys, it is so worth it. I will link it for sure. You'll love it too. Wait, Rose. I need to get that. And Elf. Mm -hmm. I love that because Elf is literally the duping queens. Dupe queens. Like, how do they do it? It's kind of really impressive. But if you guys have listened to, I, I don't even remember what episode I, I was asking Riley. I'm like, I feel like I don't have a good primer. I need a primer. And she literally said she just uses a great moisturizer in lieu of a primer because primers are kind of just like a moisturizer. So yeah. I'm totally going to get it. Link it. I'll link it. What else is in your cart? And then one more thing I wanted to mention. So Kate and Ryan last night went out and bought takeout for us while Rose and I were getting ready for the party. And Kate was wearing a white shirt and he comes home with ketchup all over his shirt. Apparently the bag for the takeout had ketchup smeared on it and he, he got panicked. it on his white shirt. It was so sad. Um, but Rose has this stuff that I actually have at my house too. It's called, what is it called? I think the messy, Miss Messy Eater or something. It's called Messy Eater Stain Remover. Yes. It worked magic. And actually, a couple weeks ago, um, Cade got like something white on his black pair of jeans and we used that on it. And he, it was really cute, actually. Wait, what did he get on his jeans? I don't know. They came out of the wash with like something white on them. Weird. Do you think it was the Buff City? 
No. Oh, okay. I don't know what it was, but I put the Messy Eater stain remover on it. They came out clean. The next wash and Kate goes, you have got to link this on your Instagram. (gasps) He's like, people need to get this. It actually works. So I will link it. I think I've talked about it before, but... It is the best. I originally, like I, when I first bought it, I was like, oh, I'll get it. But it it kind of from the outside is promoted like it's a kid, Mm -hmm. like a kid stain thing. Um, And I know so many moms that use it, but I was like, okay, this seems to be magic. I have one upstairs and one downstairs. You guys, you have to get it. You probably know it's like that blue cap. It's pretty like legit. And if our guys love it, we got the stain out, by the way. Did you say that you got it out? Got the stain out. Yep. Touch up stain on a white shirt, which is very hard Immediately. To get so Kate's shirt wasn't ruined. Everyone needs to get it. That would be a good subscription on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Especially like if you you guys seem to make messes. <laughs> <laughs> seems to be a recurring thing. But what's in your cart? Okay, so my I will absolutely link my boots. I have been wanting to get a pair of those like kind of edgier but they're kind of rider like cowgirl not cowgirl sorry horse girl (laughs) that sounds so weird but you guys would know what I mean when I link them um I was telling Riley there's this brand um G I don't even know how to pronounce it Gianna or Gianna Gian they're like three to four hundred dollar a pair of boots so if I absolutely love these and I was going to wear the heck out of them then I'd you know invest in a quality pair but I just found kind of like a dupe on um amazon and they're here i'm staring at them while we're filming so i'll link those um hopefully our outfits come together i was so i didn't know what to do because you can't put an outfit together without your shoes i'm so happy like i can't tell you how excited i am that your shoes came i was stressed for you i was too but um what were you gonna do like did you have backup i didn't even have a backup i had full faith in amazon riley had full faith in amazon so i will link the boots um other than that I also was getting ready and, you know, we're, we have to be ready really early today because we have a long event ahead of us. And I realized I'm out of my hairspray and I'm just like not obsessed with my hairspray right now. I'm using, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the name, but it's that blue bottle. It's like the Moroccan oil. Yes. I like it. I just don't know if it truly holds your hair. I think it's more of like a shine or sheen type of finish. So do you have one you love? I use a cheap one from Target. Trust me. Oh, okay. I mean, that is like nostalgic comp- dance competition days. Yes. The smell the black is, and green. Yep. The smell is very nostalgic. Okay. So I think I might grab that. Is it make your hair crunchy? No, I put it in today and I brushed out my yeah, curls it looks- and it's not crunchy. I think I need a stronger one because when I'm spraying my hair and then brushing it, because it's like a looser type of finish of a hairspray, I think I lose so many of my curls. So I think I'm going to grab that. So maybe link that as well. I will link the Moroccan oil brand because it is nice when you're kind of wanting that more like tousled light look. And all of the Moroccan oil stuff smells literally so good. Like I would just get it for the smell. It smells so good. Um, This isn't really what's in my cart, but... Remember last night how you were saying I had like some mascara and like, okay, so I feel like this kind of goes in this segment because sometimes we talk about trends or fads and things like that. I feel me and our girlfriends last weekend were saying, Riley, you guys can probably tell, but her makeup is always like flawly finished. It is. You have such like, I don't, I can't figure it out. Like, can you see right now? Like, see how I crease right there? Yeah. How do I fix that? I do creasing too, like the, under my eyes. I don't you're see saying, it. yes. Maybe try. Do you use the Laura Mercier translucent powder? No, I use Arbonne's translucent powder. But do you do that? Like, do you put foundation and then concealer and then translucent? Yeah, that's what I do. And I'm like, it feels great. But then when I look in the mirror, you know, after you do your makeup and then you catch wind of yourself later, you're like, what in the hell? <laughs> you're like, do I actually look like that? I was, I saw it last night and then I saw it again this morning, right before we started filming. So I just thought I would ask for your tips, but do you use the little triangles? I use, you should link the triangle little okay. puffs because okay. those are a life changer. You use them too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's really all I have in my cart right now. I'm trying to think, I mean, I think that's it for me. Okay. Well, should we get into the episode? I think it's time for our guests to officially come on to the podcast. This is going to be a special one. So boys, come on over. (laughs) Let's do it. We are here with two very special guests here at Drinks on Us, our husbands. Hello, boys. How's it going? How are we doing? 
So today is a very special episode. We are, so Kate and I are visiting Rose and Ryan in Louisville, Kentucky, and we thought this would be the perfect time to get the guys on the podcast and just ask them some relationship questions that you guys actually submitted into our Instagram. Yes. So boys, are you happy to be here? You are our second guest. You know, I would have liked to have been the first, but um, I'll, I'll take second. I'll take second. Just happy to be here. Yay! It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so fun. Um, the journey to starting to film, we had to share microphones. We're not tech savvy, so we made it. So I think we should get into it. All right, let's get into it. So we are going to be asking the boys some questions that you guys submitted through our Instagram. So the first question is, how did you guys meet your husbands? Oh, so will we start this? Yeah, you guys can start. Okay, so... Uh, For reference, Ryan and I met at the University of Louisville, and we were friends. I'll let Ryan share his two cents on our friendship. (laughs) Um, And we, I went to the University of Louisville to dance. He went there to play basketball. And was the question just how we met? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how we met. And we've still been living in Louisville ever since. I ever got to say this is our house. We're here in Did you say that, right? No, I didn't. Well, I said we were visiting you, but right now what you guys are seeing if you're watching the video, we are in Rose and Ryan's living room and it's stunning. I think Ryan's really lounging. Yeah. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Well, the way I met Rose was one of my teammates um his girlfriend was friends with Rose and so he, he was like, there's this other really pretty ladybird. Like you should, you know, try to like follow her and go see her. So then I made a point to anytime we were going out, um, we would pregame at Rose's friend's house. So I was trying to get as much FaceTime with Rose as possible. And uh, she friends on me pretty quick, but she came around eventually. We love that story. Yeah. It's a, it's a true redemption story. (laughs) So Kate and I also met at the university of Louisville and I also friend zoned Kate. (laughs) Sorry, boys. Kate, do you want to say the story? Okay. Yes. Um, so we, you know, we'd met face to face in like a, a dorm room or a apartment or something. (laughs) Um, and, uh, just instantly it was like, wow, who is that girl? She's so beautiful. Um, Aww. was like, yeah, super interested. Um, and I just, you know, went through pursuing her through friends and, and trying to get to know her through Rose and, and their other roommate, Erica. And, um, you know, after a while found out pretty quickly that Riley was uninterested at first and, um, you know, just kind of kept pursuing, pursuing and, and pushing the buttons until I finally cracked through and got a little ice cream date one time. And then, uh, the rest kind of rolled, rolled into history as, as they say. So. I think history. I think this is a good um, show that if you're in the friend zone or have been friend zone, don't give up. Right? You guys both had you got you guys both won in the end. Look at us now filming a pod, married. <laughs> Look at us now. <laughs> we also forgot to mention what the boys are drinking. Rose and I already discussed what's in our cup, but Ryan and Cade, what is in your cup today? Cade, take it away. You coffee lover, you? Yeah, uh, this is like my third time I've ever had coffee in my lifetime. I'm just committing to it for the podcast. Um, I don't, I literally don't even know what's in there. It's you, you full milk. Me. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, so I got Cade an iced caramel latte this morning and it's like white. <laughs> so it's pretty much just a milk, an iced milk, but you like it. So. Ryan, what's in your cup? Yeah, um, I think I have a little bit more espresso in my cup than Kate's. <laughs> Um, it's just like our favorite coffee shop quills. Um, I think it's called the woodsman, but I don't know what flavor that necessarily is. Okay, cool. Um, Okay. Well, then you guys already know the flavor. So I got a woodsman. (laughs) The sharing mics is difficult. We're like, Oh, take it back. Take it back. But Ryan was like Kate and he wasn't a coffee lover, but I'm so, um, proud of your journey with your coffee. Yeah. I'm slowly turning Kate into a coffee lover, I think. Well, I was telling Riley on our way to get it that it's so crazy when I'm with Ryan and we have like our mornings together. He's all about the coffee. But the second we're not together, he just doesn't need coffee in the morning. I'm like, how do you go on and off? I can't go a day without coffee. No. Ryan, you're crazy. 
I don't know what it is. I just, I'm influenced by her. She's very influential. Um, that's yeah, our influencer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, so like when she's brewing some coffee or espresso, I'm just like, you know what? Coffee does sound good, but. Next question. How did you know your husband was the one? Okay. This kind of goes hand in hand with the friend zone and how we met. I feel like it was just so easy. And I think building a friendship helps kind of, you know, that you guys can get along and have good conversations. I feel like when Ryan and I were friends, we always, we kind of realized we had the same morals and our families raised us similar. And I just felt like our conversations were so great and it kind of made it easier because I would be so nervous, like go on a date or something. So for me, I think in past relationships, it felt hard and, just never felt equal and everything was just easy and fun with Ryan when I finally um, turned the switch and gave him a chance. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, it was, we had such good foundation. Um, it was like, like Rose said, it just kind of came easy, all the conversations and we knew so much about each other. Um, I, I knew she was the one like early on. It was just whether or not she was going to give me a chance. Um, so thankfully she did. Um, and like Kate said, the rest was history. Wait, this just reminded me when you said Rye. So we're obviously all under the same roof and Rose keeps calling Ryan Rye, but she also calls me Rye. And so no one ever knows who Rose is talking to. Me and Ryan are answering at the same time. It's, it's just so hard. But I'm like, they would both turn their heads like, you have to be clear. Is it Ryan or Riley? So I'll be like, Rye, Lee, Rye. <laughs> in. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So we're working through that. But I would say probably the same for us, Kate. Like we were friends first and we got to know each other before we actually started dating. And I always remember you always made me laugh. And I feel like that was kind of how you got me. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts? Yeah. I mean, um, just trying to break down the walls of the friend zone was obviously tough. It took some time, but um, just trying to show her who I was as a person and and let her understand that it's like, oh, I wasn't looking for like a fling or anything, just like super fun for the moment. It was something I was pretty serious about. Well, good job. Thanks. <laughs> Should we go to the next question? Yes. Okay. Next question is, when did you start sharing finances? When you moved in together or when you got married? That's a good question. I know this finance guru to my left will have some few words to say, but I think when we, we actually moved into our house together, before we were married. So I feel like that kind of was organic, but we still had everything separate. But once we were married, we decided to do joint bank accounts. I don't know. This is definitely more of a Ryan question. So yeah, it was definitely like equal when we were dating and engaged. Um, we like split a lot of things, um, a lot of like Venmo transactions and stuff. And then Shortly after we got married, we just put all of our bank accounts into one, and um, and we then you're like, we were a full blown financial team sure at that like point. How we take out versus like groceries? How we, before we were married? How we do it? Uh, what would we do? do? Um, I probably well, I would take out all. I would do all the takeout. Like I would pay for all like the meals when we would go out to eat or like pick up Chipotle or you know anything like that, and then Rose would pick up. A, like a lot of the groceries and if we ever felt like it was heavier for one person than the you know than the other then we were just kind of like venmo each other i don't know it never became an issue it was like never an issue which was good what i will say you guys i think you guys do something similar but it's just so much easier now i love uh, ryan just told me because we have different credit cards for um like flight points. And he said, we need to get a copy of each other's because sometimes you don't see every spend and we need to, he said, I need to be held accountable, but I think it's nice just having everything from one account. Cause then it's not like, <laughs> <Kate>. <laughs> um, so I like it. It was like a hassle to do it, but it's just nice. Cause it makes all, Oh, Ryan wants to talk again, but it makes everything easier. She, d she likes it cause she has, twice as much money to spend now too yeah. so I mean, well now that, that we true now that we share a credit card it's like everything's 50 percent off because we're sharing <laughs> <laughs> okay how do you guys do it is it what was I'm your just journey kidding. 
Um, so we were the same as you guys when we were dating, even when we were engaged, we would just split everything like Venmo, split everything down the middle. And now that we're married, um, we joint our bank accounts together and it is so much easier. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's been amazing, but I think you would probably agree, Kate, it was nice, like splitting everything when we were dating. And then once we took the leap and got married, it made sense to join our bank accounts then. Yeah. I mean, like Riley said, everything is accurate up to that point. And then like, especially now, like Riley does a lot of social media stuff where she has her own money and I do things where I have my own money where, um, you know, the joint bank account is like for our week, you know, our jobs paychecks where, you know, that's for bills and the home type thing where, um, you got to have your own, Ryan and I kind of talked about this this morning, we went for a drive and, um, you know, you need to have your drive own, for what Kate? uh, to go to a bourbon distillery, but, um, <clears throat> you know, just to have your own money to share, or I'm sorry, your own money to do things on your own where, um, you know, you can't really nitpick the other person for, for doing things that they want to do with their own money. So I think that helps as well. I love that. That's so smart. Cause I remember when we were engaged, um, once we started living under the same roof, I guess I was more aware of how many Amazon packages were coming to the house. And I remember him saying when we, our engagement was coming to an end, he's like, these packages are going to have to come to a halt once we're on the same bank account. And they don't. <laughs> Kate said they don't, but that's what we do. I know everyone does do whatever works for you, but we got that question a lot. So we felt like we needed to answer that. Yeah. And I feel like it's, it was definitely a gray area for us. Like we didn't know how to do it, but I really liked the way that we did it. And it was like, it felt natural. It wasn't like forced to force our bank accounts together. Um, okay. Next question. Yep. So next question is, do you have any advice on how to handle long distance? It's becoming really hard now that we are not together. I think you two need to take the, the reins here. Okay. So Kate and I do long distance a lot um, because of Kate's job. And so I would say we have become kind of accustomed to it. Just like FaceTiming is so important, checking in, knowing that you're on different schedules and finding time to still talk and like have conversations. Um, I feel like just making time for each other is so important, whether it's a FaceTime or a phone call. I don't know. What would you say, Cade? Yeah, I mean, there's no like easy way around it. You just have to learn how to like it, um, unfortunately. But yeah, like I said, there's there's FaceTimes and, and things like that, or just trying to set aside time, um, you know, when I'd be in hotel rooms or on the road to just make extra phone calls and just check in here and there. I mean, I can't tell you how many random texts I send to Riley throughout the day. Just, how are you doing? Are you okay? Just random things like that. Just checking in here and there versus having full-blown conversations all the time, but just, you know, kind of being there for the person when you're not physically there. Another thing that helps us when we're doing long distance is knowing the next time, like I'm coming out to see you or like... Having something to look forward to. Having something to look forward to and always having that next trip planned really helps and just like gives us the light at the end of the tunnel with long distance. I, well, Ryan and I have done long distance minor compared. I feel like to Riley and Kate, they're like, that's nothing. But Ryan and I, even through this transition of moving, which I know Riley and I will um, kind of unpack that in a later episode, but I've been asking Riley for all her tips because it is hard, especially when you're accustomed to doing everything together and your mornings and like, you know, every minute detail when you're under the same roof. And so that is always tough, but I agree. I think you guys kind of said this, but I think a lot of times long distance is perspective. Like you can choose to be sad and mope about it, which is so easy and justified. But I think if you use it as a chance to like, what can you like, Cade can really focus on his job and career. And then Riley can like, I don't know, just you can find ways to grow individually, which ultimately I'm not saying long distance is easy. And Ryan and I only have to do it here and there throughout our relationship for a couple weeks at a time. Riley and Kate have done months and months at a time. But I think um, as hard as it is, light at the end of the tunnel, seeing each other, but also trying to like find ways to grow to make each other better in the end. Yeah. And then like technology helps so much, um, like being able to FaceTime, you know, every other day or every night and like Cade was saying, just checking in on, on them. Um, it just helps. Um, versus, you know, before when technology wasn't around, like people would go weeks. I, I don't understand how, um, what did people do before FaceTime? Like they'd be sending each other letters and stuff, but, um, <laughs> how, do you know, how, like, how do you know someone's alive you know, yeah, from the other like, side of the world? Like hopefully this letter gets you in two weeks. Uh, you yeah. Know, it's like, but I think you're from in a month. It like, 
it really shows it shows how special that person is in your life because you kind of take for granted when you're with them all the time like how much you love having your favorite person around and then when they're not there you're like you know distance makes the heart grow fonder that's the phrase and it couldn't be more true when you're away from like your person I will say too, I don't know if you guys can see, Rin is tucked up in this pillow right here, but I feel like having a pet makes it that much harder. Like Cade, I know you can talk about leaving truly. It makes it so hard too when you're away from your pet because now you have like a little family together. It's hard, but what do you have to say there, yeah, I, I was pulled around the story this morning um, a couple of years ago. Riley was just super busy with um, bridal showers and our engagement stuff and like preparing for our wedding where she was able to come see me, but it was just a hassle to bring the dog to travel and being far away. And, um, I went from spring training in February until the end of the season in September where I didn't see the dog. And I was like, we were running and I were talking. It's like, imagine having kids and being away for like a week for a vacation. It's like my heart breaks dropping my dog at my brother's house this weekend. It's like, I went six months, you know, without seeing the dog and like it crushes you. But I think too, it helps the girls or, you know, the person that's with the dog to have a little bit of something to have someone, you know, someone around, I guess, more than just being alone too. If they're the ones being stuck at home and not being able to go out and do as much, I think that helps for sure. Yeah. Having that companion is like, oh it's everything. Yeah, I don't know what I would do without Julie. And I love what you said, Rose, about perspective. I feel like being positive and not like sulking in long distance. And obviously you miss your partner so much, but having perspective, just staying positive helps everyone all and around. And keeping yourself busy, like yes. being productive and trying to find a way to be productive during that time away from them. It just, it's going to make the time go by faster. If you just like, sulk. It's less time you have to sit and do nothing and think and about think about things missing you'd rather them. be doing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I hope that helps. You guys did a great job answering that. Riley and Kate are seasoned in that field. Okay, next question. How do you not let the small things bother you? And what's something you have learned throughout marriage so far? I think if you are early on and those things are going to bother you because it's you're not used to you're not used to that type of stuff. But the older you get and like the more mature the relationship becomes, you realize like, am I going to go to bed at the end of the day? And is it going to affect me? Probably not. Mm -hmm. And am I going to wake up tomorrow morning? Is it going to bother me? Probably not. So like just allowing the things that like aren't directly impacting you, like in a really, truly negative, like unhealthy way, like right. just let it go. I think that's like the biggest thing you learn. Like I'm sure obviously I do things and, and you know, that you just got to let go and look past because maybe it's not the way you would do it or have it done, you know, a certain way, but it's just looking past the things that aren't going to like, literally negatively impact your life because you'll go you drive yourself crazy over mm -hmm. it do i drive you crazy depends on what time it is <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> did you have oh um i would say pick your battles that's right. and you're a team at the end of the day like what you were saying you got like you and your partner are a team and that's all that matters so i don't know i feel like we are just are accustomed and I, don't know. I, I think too, like sometimes there's things that I you know I would do or she would do that wouldn't be necessarily the way that I would handle things or whatever. But over time, you become so much of that person, you start maybe even doing it that way, or they start doing it your way too. So it like oh kind of bleeds yes. into each other, anyways. You know, as you become one. Yes, I totally agree. I think Ryan and I just kind of going off what Kate said, it made me think. Like sometimes we'll just realize we're being stubborn and doing things just because of how the other person handled it. And that I feel like is a way we've come to grow. We're like, we should not be doing it because the other person was being short or stubborn or whatever the case may be. But I think it honestly goes back to what Riley and Kate were saying. It's like, have grace with your partner because there's so many times where I am, I regret how I reacted or something I did. So I have to have that extend that grace to Ryan, especially now that the four of us, well, two individual marriages, were not, <laughs> I didn't say that correctly, but I think you truly are a team. So you should be having grace and like Riley said, picking your battles. And um, I think too living as far as I think a lot of times the small things, at least for us, we lived with each other and you guys did too before you were married. I can imagine it being even that much more overwhelming when you're married. But I feel like 
living with a partner is where maybe you could let the small things build up. But at the end of the day, like you get used to it, like they said, and you love that person. So see the good side of it. Yeah. Those, those little quirks and idiosyncrasies are like the things that you learn to love about someone. And you kind of figure it out earlier on in your relationship. If like you have a pet peeve or something and you're like, Oh my gosh, this person like brushes their teeth and, incredibly weird or something something <laughs> random and like you can't get past it then you probably aren't going to get married but like no 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 no, that wasn't aimed at you no. rose how do yeah. you brush your teeth <laughs> no i'm just saying like some random thing that would get on your nerves um i mean you're married to that person like i love all your little quirks and idiosyncrasies by now so um I don't know. It's just having that grace. And like Kate was I, I like, saying, like, yeah. is it going to, is it going to make me not be able to sleep at night? Like, I personally love unloading the dishwasher to reload it my way. Like that's one thing about like our relationship that I love. So like, I, I do not it. get them started on the dishwasher. <laughs> away from it. Dude, Rose is the worst dishwasher loader. Well, second to Riley. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they could be a team of the worst. I, I sometimes though. think she closes her eyes and just throws it in there. And like, yeah, I'm like, there's no way you thought that that was going to get washed. Rose will have like half that. of her meal still on the <laughs> plate and be like, yeah, the dishwasher will get it for sure. Yeah. Like, no, no the worst is when it comes out and it's not clean. And instead of just like picking out the little piece of dried oatmeal or whatever, they just put it back just in there put it back in. and pray to God the second time around it's going to get washed. It's dishwasher just around too. Yeah. And then she has As the if that, like, dishwasher knows there's one piece of oatmeal left on that one little she has container. The That's audacity great. to be like, I don't think our dishwasher's that good. I'm like, yeah, you had a whole lasagna in it. Like yeah. there's no way. I'm like, just use the brush and like pick it out. You know? <laughs> That's what well, well, the sink is. Also for. Riley doesn't believe in, in soaking dishes. Like, <laughs> like if it's a lasagna dish or something where it's crusted and it's hard, I soak it in the sink to loosen the <laughs> yes, crap up. Yeah, to. And I, she's like, you're just being lazy. You don't want to wash it. I'm like, all right, then handle it yourself. All right. You know, like, how did we is, get here? This is therapeutic for me. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to say this on the pod, but before when we were figuring out how to film, Ryan and Cade said this was their chance to redeem themselves on our episode where we talked about like just different little pet peeves. And the one big thing they brought up is they are both so psycho about the dishwasher. And Ryan and Cade were judging my skills last night because we had a little party and they were really critiquing how I loaded it, but they're clean, aren't they? That remains to be seen. I don't I don't know if they're completely clean. We also could have probably fit 10 more dishes in it if it was loaded more efficiently, but hey, you know. Because I'm not a dish. It forks up or fork, like utensils up or down in the basket. I think yeah. down. I like, I think we see, do. I, or up. Oh. I like up because I feel like it runs down off of the... Ryan doesn't like the... I like stick the fork in down. Oh yes, I like the heads facing up. Like you put the handles down. Yeah, Wait, give it a whack. I thought you, I thought you did your ours up because Ryan gets mad. I don't. Do you guys have? I know. Th- wait, 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 wait. Yes, our dishwasher. You can't even put it fork in, like head in. You have to put it like backside in. Yes, but. I I don't know if you guys have this. I know we're going down a dishwasher spiral, but we have a top little thing above where you put your cups. Do you guys have that? No. Okay. Well, we have that and that's where we put like our straws and I throw a bunch of silverware up there and it drives Ryan nuts. He said, put it where the silverware belongs. <laughs> don't you get so mad? He's like, where's all the silverware? I said, it's up by the straws. Well, yeah, that's because that's for straws and like other like flat cooking utensils. And, and now there's a bunch of like, like, you know, little uh, forks and spoons and that I have to move from up there to make room for all the utensils. It's just, there's, everything has its place. Well, we're glad that you guys got that off your chest. I they think literally, feel better. they could not wait to get on the mics to redeem themselves from our wives episode. They're like, we can't wait to redeem <laughs> yeah. ourselves. I'm like, oh my gosh. It kills me because I'll be listening in the car and it's like, I obviously know Riley and Rose so well that it doesn't feel like I'm listening to like foreign people talking to a, a podcast and mm-hmm. so like they'll be having a conversation i want to interject and be like hold on like <laughs> but i know that like i can't talk to them in the conversation so i come home with like a list of things i'm like uh what about this this and this and like you know you're talking about but ryan submits it to drinks on us pod instagram i mean you guys are only hearing one side of the story exactly like rose is actually the culprit for the shoes in the foyer just so you guys know 
And I sent in a picture of my two shoes up there with her nine pairs of shoes. And they didn't even post it on their story. So they're withholding information from the fans, if we're being honest. It's picking and choosing, whatever fits the narrative. <laughs> they said they want to start their own podcast to defend themselves called Drinks With Up. So may- stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay, so let's get into our advice segment called oh, The yes. Girls Room. Let's do it. Are you guys ready? Woke up ready. Let's do it. This is serious okay. stuff, guys. First submission. I need advice. Do your husbands get annoyed about you shopping and buying things like mine does? Oh. Well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really want to pass the mic for this one. I know. I'm holding on tight. Kate or Ryan, who wants to take it away? Kate's going to start. All right. Wait, can you repeat the question one more time? Sure. <laughs> Let me get it up again. Hold on for this one, folks. I need advice. Do your husbands get annoyed about you shopping and buying things like mine does? Okay, so it depends. The personal items, again, like with Riley's personal money, that is something like I told Ryan we talked about this morning. It's like something I like. I have no right to get upset about, or like it's not my problem to like jump on her for something like that. Where it's you know it's your money, you can do what you want. Um, it's like the personal or the, the joint card that we have for like our you know credit card points and whatever that we use to buy a lot of stuff um around the house but it's sometimes there's things on there that aren't necessarily like things that for necessity us, like somehow sometimes her nail appointment shows up on our joint card and again like if it's a decoration for the house maybe what i have bought it probably not but like is going in our house and so like i can understand that but like things like that sometimes are like not my cup of tea. So if I was getting my nails done, it'd be equal, but I'm not. So that's where I stand with that. But um, nails are a necessity. <laughs> Ryan, what do you have to say? So my main thing is I have to try to hold Rose and myself to a strict budget. And if we abide by that budget, I don't care what's bought in within that budget as long as we're not going over that budget. And then, like Kate said, for Rose's fun, fun money, like, I don't even care what you spend it on. So, I mean, yeah. Well, my fun, my fun money budget and my beauty and um, fashion are just, they seem to go so quick. Can't, I can't. <laughs> Can we raise the budget, Ryan, please? I don't know about that. I mean, we'd be eating ramen noodles, um, but at but least she would have, have really nice hair. hair. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, my hair is like 25, 30 bucks a month to to maintain. So I don't need much, you know. So but, what is your advice? I would say at least what works for us is figure out your budget. And then whatever's bought, as long as you're not going over that budget, like, you know, there might be some months where you think there's some unnecessary things that are bought, but if it's within that budget and that's going to, you know, help you guys reach your financial goals, then it, there's nothing to get worked up about. It's the conversation when you're going over that budget, it's like, all right, we need to be more disciplined and hold each other accountable, things like that. Great advice. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Next question. How do you handle not bonding with your husband's friends, wives? We're all cordial, but have nothing in common and hanging out slash going on trips can be rough. No bad feelings, but it gets a little awkward. Okay. This is for us. Yes. You guys can like echo if the rules were reversed. Like if you were around, you know, like the you guys get it. Go ahead. What do you think? I, I, I feel like we're lucky and mm-hmm. all of their friends, wives are just like us and we have become so close, but... I would say if there is someone that you're not bonding with, maybe find something that you have in common and kind of run with it and go off of that and just really take the time to try to foster that friendship because it sounds like, you know, you're going to have to hang out with them at some point. What Mm -hmm. would you say? No, that's great advice. I do think we're lucky, but I think it's okay to like, they're the odds of me finding someone that I connect with as deep as in like how close Riley and I are is so rare. And so you're going to have your girlfriends that you, I mean, you pick them as your friends, right? It's kind of like when your husband is friends with someone, you don't get any say in that, who that girl is, but it's okay if you're not best friends, but you can still have a good time and connect with them. And at the end of the day, it's almost, this may come off wrong, but you're also like 
take them on for the team and your husband's having fun and it's around his friends. And if you have the right perspective and mindset around it, like if you go into it and you're like, Oh, I don't like her. I don't like this, that she's not like my best friends. I think just like Bradley said, find something you can connect with, be nice and just put yourself out there. Cause I'm sure the more time you spend with each other, you'll, you can at least have fun together, even though she may not be your best friend, but I don't know, guys, do you have any advice? I mean, also not going to be best friends with everybody. So it's like, you know, put the effort in the conversation, you know, your, your cordial hellos and whatever. Then it's like, you know, maybe ask them about their job or something like that. We can start try to spark a conversation. Like I said, find something that's in common, try to run with it for as long as you can. And, you know, obviously you don't have to like be talking to them for hours, but just give your best effort to it. And then, you know, I don't think either party is obviously going to be expecting the other person to become your best friend in, in, a, in a few short moments too. So just give your best effort. And again, Rose is like, take one for the team. It's like, there's times where, um, you got to do things and, and be around people who maybe who aren't your circle necessarily, but you're doing it for your other person. Yeah. What do you think, Ray? There you go again. Um, yeah. I, like even if it's somebody that you're not, you wouldn't choose to necessarily spend like your free time with. Um, yeah. Like Riley was saying, just find those commonalities with them and you know, you're doing, you're, you're, you're there because you want to be there with your wife or, you know, in your guys' case, your husband and, and their friends. And um, it's it's really not the end of the world. I mean, unless that person is like the absolute worst, then, then I think the spouse would understand like you not wanting to go. Like you can take kind of take one for the team and just fight through it every once in a while. Great advice, boys. Mm -hmm. Well, that wraps up our happy hour. Thank you guys so much for spending this hour with us. We hope you had fun. Rose and Ryan, thanks for coming. Ryan and I are going to take over from here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, get off my podcast. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming on. Ryan yes. and Cade, any last words for the listeners? Yes. Take everything these girls say with a grain of salt. When it comes to us, <laughs> when it comes to us, just know that there's always another side of the story. And if you want to hear that other side of the story, hit me up um, at Ryan McMahon on Instagram and and ask me, you know, Ryan, I want to hear your side. Yeah, we, we are open to fielding all of our any potential questions in our DMs. So feel free to reach out to us <laughs> on our side of it. Um, but make sure you're 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 following and subscribing to the girls. They're awesome. Oh, I love that. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank As always, guys. please feel free to share this podcast with your friends and family who might love it. We are still new to the podcasting world and we appreciate you so much. Yes. And we can be found at Drinks on Us Pod on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. I hope you guys watch the YouTube version of this because you can see the four of us and Rin hang out in the living room. But yes, if you guys are loving it, all of your reposts mean the world to Riley and I and sharing it, five star reviews, all those different things. We want to make this happy hour big and fun. Maybe you can listen to this one with your husband or your man. Hopefully um, you guys got a little taste into our relationship. We have a really exciting day ahead. So we're going to log off now. But as always, you guys got to grab your um, drinks, Kate and Ryan. We're going to do it to final cheers. Let's put this coffee down first. <laughs> Kate is taking the coffee for the team, but cheers, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we will see you same time, same place next week. Love Yay. you. Bye.